mean, I started when I was around, like five, turning six, and I only got into it because, honestly, I loved it since I was like two years old, like racing in general, any type of motorsport. And my mom and dad asked me if I wanted to go racing just to try it out. And I agreed. And it was actually like, it was like natural to me. First time I drove it, it just felt really natural. And it just felt like I wanted to do it every single time, even if I got out of it. And the podium in the Euro Series definitely meant a lot to me because considering I am one of the only Filipinos who's ever done it, um, it's just honestly a very great feeling, especially because in the end, not even just a Filipino, but one of the only Asians who's reached the WSK Euro Series are, you know, Alexander Albon, who's now in Formula One, Yuki Tsunoda, who's also in Formula One now. And, you know, considering I am following their steps, trying to follow the steps going into Formula One. It just means so much to me. So uh, For me, yeah. naman, I started racing motorcycles when I was uh, four years old. Um, for me, it's a family sport because um, not just I race in my family, but also my father and my older brother. And um, yeah, I, I was the first to achieve a podium from the Philippines in the, yes. in the German Championship. And also this year, I started racing in the World Championship. So I'm just really proud to carry the flag and I hope that um, Philippine motorsports continues to grow on two wheels and four wheels. No, no, no. It, it, it hit me that you wanted to follow the footsteps of the likes of Alex Albon, the one, is, uh, the one in F1 now. So more or less, that's, that's also the same route. What's it like for you? What's the journey like for you? I mean, you know, Formula One drivers have to live in Europe even though they're from Asia because it's just you know, such a hard sport. It's every week there's a race, there's a race, there's a race. You always have to train. So right now I'm actually based in Desenzano Garda in Italy. And uh, I stay there for the whole year. And then I come back to the Philippines around one or two months of the year because I need to just go back, meet my family. Just, you know, being with them makes me make, makes it feel better. And when you come back, you feel more, you know, relaxed. And when you feel more relaxed, you, you feel more calm and makes you drive more focused and more, more concentrated. And yeah, for me, I want to follow Alexander Albon's footsteps and just any of the Asian drivers really because that's the path that they took. They worked hard for it. They never gave up just to try to reach it. And in the end, they got what they wanted, a Formula One seat. Yeah. And that's just what I also want. How young are you now, William? I am 14 at the moment. 14 at the moment. Just a couple of years because young drivers now, diba? when you go to F2 or F1, or is mali, mga nasa 19, 20, 21. How about you, Troy? How about you, Troy? Are you based in, uh, in, in the Philippines? Um, well, me, I'm also based in, in Europe. Uh, I move between Italy and, and London. Um, but fortunately for me, my races are a bit more spread out. I only have about eight races in a year. I think William has it in a more weekly basis. Um, so every few months I'm able to return to the Philippines. And for me, it's also nice because not just am I able to see my girlfriend, my family, my friends, but um, I'm just, uh, I just enjoy being here, being at home. And uh, the training is also nice here. Um, but yeah, um, right now I'm in the, like the first step of the World Championship. And there's about uh, two more steps to go to basically reach the, the top. So it's just a little bit more, and I'll I'll be trying to to do my best to reach there. We have William John Riley go, and of course Troy Alberto joining us here on Off the Record. Are you ready for the fast break round? Well, <laughs> mobilis to, mobilis. It's fast. <laughs> All right. P one two. Here P2, we go. Thirty seconds. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. Best hype song. Um, two less lonely people in the world. Two less lonely people yes, yes. in the world. Wow. Hey, that's okay. Such a, that's such a chill song <laughs> for a motorcycle racer. Yeah, for me, I, I don't feel the need to be hyped, more to be chill. Okay. Chill. Oh, okay. oh right. that's nice. Interesting. That's a nice input. Interesting. Okay. William, okay. best hype song. Uh, mine's actually a little bit weird because before a race, I listened to like a little like Frank Sinatra in a way. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, like I have a playlist in my phone, and then I just like in the pre-grid, I have earphones on that are like Bluetooth to my phone, 
and then I just have it on, and then my 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 coach and my mechanic usually just keeps my phone with them. And then before the race, like two minutes before the race, when I have to put my helmet on, I take it off, and then I'm just like really calmed out. I mean, it's better because you feel more calm, you know, and you just drive faster. That's so nice. That's, that's a very nice input. Shout out to Maki Angat. Sabi niya, these kids are old souls, man. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Kasi, that, that's just why we are amazed because we get to ask this to volleyball athletes, basketball athletes, and it's always like something upbeat, something party yeah. music. Alam mo yun? Pero ganun, baliktag pala, no? When you're, when you're in a fast-paced environment, yeah. you want to chill and calm. Parang ganun. Interesting. Nice. I, yeah. That's, huh. Okay. okay next. <laughs> next. <laughs> Race day ritual. Uh, William. William. Okay, so usually before a race, every single time I have to warm up, listen to music, especially because it calms me down. And, you know, it's just a ritual for me to pray every race, before a race, every morning. And then after the race, just thank, thank the Lord um, that I had a good day. Or even if I didn't have a good day, just that I made it through the whole day like, safely. Because motorsport is very dangerous. So that's pretty much my race ritual. Troy? Okay. Um, well, for me, first off, I uh, have to pray. And then I always try to, to wear the same thing on race day. So like the same pair of socks, um, the lucky pair of socks. And then uh, I tried to visualize in my head doing a few laps of the race, visualizing myself winning or getting on the podium. And then um, from there, just race. Yeah. I, I kind of want to see the lucky socks. <laughs> what what are these back. lucky socks? <laughs> oh, they're just, they're just basic. They just feel nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah. 